Hey guys, so this is Class Notes episode number 44. Okay, so um, let's get into it. As you can see, I have been playing around a little bit with a new camera I borrowed from a friend, um, uh, which I will test further uh, this week and next week before I decide if it's worth um, the buy. Uh, it is a 36 degree 360 degree camera um, so I am very excited to test it actually in the big gym so uh, it actually um, allows me to um, to walk around in the gym to walk uh, to different per people and uh, the camera can then automatically focus on me while I walk through the whole room or to any other person I would like to focus on so uh, this should be very interesting Anyways, let's get into the content of uh, this week's classes. We were, again, practicing um, line two, movement number five. So that's the Erxian Zhuan Dao, okay? The two immortals preaching the way or teaching the way. And um, the, uh, the, the focus was mainly on understanding the basic entry method that this... Uh, fifth movement of the second line teaches us. Okay, you've seen it before um, when we've practiced the basic entry methods, uh, but now it's also connected to this motion of the two immortals. Okay, so yesterday I filmed a little bit of our applications class uh, in, the, in the small back room that we have in the gym. And uh, well, it's just, uh, I will talk you just through uh, how we structured the class, we started, or we usually start with a partner warm up. Okay, there is. Um, I, I try to keep it a little bit more. Um, how to say a, a little bit more chaotic. The the warm up. Uh, we start with very simple twisho drills, or um, yeah, basically wrestling drills, um, where we do not work against each other but let's say for each other. So here in this particular drill, we keep our feet uh, fixed or glued to the floor. And then we have our partner move us through our ranges of motion. And uh, so this is quite nice because you are uh, kind of not allowed to do your own stretching routine or your own mobility exercises. But now your partner is guiding you through the ranges. Uh, if you like it or not, you kind of have to move through it. Um, of course, without any pressure or uh, creating creating too much strain. This is really a warm up, getting your joints uh, ready for partner work, um, but in a more chaotic way than you would usually do when you practice by yourself. Okay, so this is it. Um, standing in this kind of gongbu stance, but then shifting the weight from the front leg to the back leg. Uh, there's a little bit of spinal motion in there as well um, when you try to avoid the pressure from, from your partner. And yes, in general, you want to uh, not move into painful areas. So you have to maybe move other areas of your body in order to avoid um, the strain in one joint, for example. Okay, so uh, this is really worth exploring. I love this exercise. Um, it's always kicking you slightly out of your comfort zone uh, without overstressing the system. Okay, so this is a warm up. Uh, the next exercise that we did is more common in uh, especially Taiji circles, of course. It's a single handed or one handed toy show. Uh, sticking hands, uh, which works with the same basic stance that we practice here, but in this single-handed um, twisho, um, we focus more on shifting the weight properly from the front leg to the to the rear leg, uh, and while doing so, when we reach the um, the limit of our weight shifting um, options with the rear leg we um, need to rotate our spine, okay? So we, you, you can have your partner push you 
backwards as far as uh, as possible but then if you are reaching the end of your range of motion you need to rotate your your spine in order to avoid the pressure to your center um, and the third exercise again we do it for warming up uh, is a uh, also a method from which is usually practiced in uh, taiji Chuan. that's the um si ping tui shou, uh, where we have two hands working together uh, and where we try to control the wrist and the elbow of our partner uh, throughout the, the circle that we create with our arms. It's a very nice uh, exercise, uh, kind of has the quality of um, carrying your baby in your arms uh, like a cradle. Um, and also again a little bit forward and backward motion. Mm, we will go into the practice of this particular si ping tui shou, uh, a little later when we uh, approach line four of our Hou Tian system, there it becomes uh, much more important. For now, it's not important. For now, uh, the simple opening methods where we start from a position without contact into the position where we have contact to the hands of our opponent, that's more important to us at the moment. Okay, so the methods I present here are already known to you if you have been following class notes and of course the, the online courses. So it's the, the P-Train entry or uh, uh, followed by this one here, the chopping from the inside and the outside. Here I usually want my uh, students to practice the um, neutral stance and then moving from neutral stance into either to the inside of your opponent's uh, defense or to the outside. And the third one, which is connected to, as I said before, the fifth movement of line two, Er Xian Zhuan Dao. This is the following opening. So you first uh, try to catch the hand in front of you. You slap towards the face, so you create a reaction of your partner because uh, he or she needs to lift up the hand, which you then catch as well before you bring both hands down in a circular motion and strike towards the, the chin or the, the ear of your partner. Um, or as always, when you have an opening method, uh, if you have an opening method, you try to move away from center line and into a more uh, favorable angle, in this case, into a almost 45 degree angle towards the side. Okay, so from center line, I step outside to the right while striking, catching the hands and then moving sideways, getting out of center line where I load my right leg. And usually then we change directions again in order to move to the other side. So that's very Bagua-esque, so to say, moving away from center into a favorable angle and then moving into the next favorable angle. So there is constant change. You keep moving so your partner needs to adjust and follow your steps uh, all the time. Okay, so three different openings that you can practice with your partner wherever you are in the world. Right, so that's three openings and uh, yeah. Now we come to applications. Um, only using the third opening method. This one, you've seen that before. Uh, it's kind of bouncing back and forth, stepping from center line into an angle and then changing the angle again immediately. The th second application is to use that opening method in order to move into a hip throw. Um, when you practice this statically, like we do so in uh, this video here, where you have, where you're standing in front of your partner, and then you move in, then the distance to get your arm around the back is quite long. Uh, the practice is important to practice it and to get the, the, the hand motion uh, into the system, so to say, but uh, please be aware that the distance is a little bit too far in order to really get into the position to throw your partner from there. So. The application of this throw usually happens when you have both hands hooked and then you are already getting a little closer to your, your opponent from where then you can enter 
slip your arm through, get to the to grab to catch the the back, or lift up through the shoulder and then move into the hip throw. So you have to think about it a little bit more in a dynamic setting. Maybe we will film that later. But if you do it with this fixed step here, you see that the distance I need to cover to turn my hip uh, to the front of his body, that's quite a distance okay it's a little bit too long anyway of course it works because it's cooperative and he is not moving so everything works perfect if the world would be so easy right so the next thing is grabbing a hold of the of the wrists same opening method and when then we basically use the the inward pressure from our partner or opponent and with the hands in order to create some tension and again move to the side of the body of our partner again like in the application before this is quite a long way and it shouldn't be applied from such a long distance but again practice is not necessarily uh, always the reality so you have to think uh, of this application coming from a little closer distance so you actually get the chance with just one tiny step to move to the side of your opponent from where then you strike towards the kidneys with the uh, secondary hand or no with the back hand to open up the chest so you're striking towards the, the the kidneys and this opens the the chest it lifts the spine or extends the spine a little bit and the next motion is that you counter that motion and you strike uh, with your secondary hand uh, for, uh, downwards okay you can you can see this I think coming up next you strike towards the kidneys so that your opponent needs to open up and then you strike down again to break the structure okay so I said that it it uh, feels quite quite uncomfortable it's it's uh, very nasty but of course it's not uh, not doing any real damage and this is usually where you need to be a little um, just need to be attentive and don't think of it as a final strike you know it's like this is the strike where i'm gonna hit my opponent and he's not gonna stand up again no these kind of moves and these kind of strikes are all created to destroy the structure of your opponent okay so it's not the it's not the end you know i'm lifting his chest i'm striking down so his structure breaks and this again creates an opportunity for me to move in for a throw to add like a, a real punch to finish the fight okay so it's just a way to break the structure not a final move yeah and it's like uh, in the in the fifth movement of the second form it's like both hands are circling in you extend and then you strike and then you might move into uh, a throw a takedown or apply some real force through your strikes okay open close and perhaps throw okay so that's one idea to finish or of applications uh, that you can practice um, with when you learn the the fifth form of the second line er xian zhuan dao to immortals preaching the way uh, and again striking in Baguazhang is oftentimes used to break the structure of your opponent's uh, body. Okay, so not every strike is there to finish a fight. Basically, the idea is that you work towards the perfect moment where you can, where you can actually strike and create real damage. But in order to be able to, you have to break the structure of your opponent first. Otherwise he or she will be too strong and uh, still capable to defend okay so you can use this with upward with upward striking downward striking striking through to different sides every strike basically that you do should move the body of your opponent in any way that's that's uh, an interesting concept we will talk about that a little later again one of the things that i always say don't think about pressure points but point pressure where you actually with your strikes or with your with your motions create movement in your opponent's body which then creates opportunities to apply real force and to finish the fight okay just keep that in mind that's one of the most important lessons you learn uh, from Baguazhang applications okay so this was class notes uh, number 44 i hope you enjoyed it i hope you uh, will use the material to practice with your partner and
speak soon.